Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. Drone rescues becoming more commonplace. AMA celebrates a year of successful advocacy. And onerous Ohio UAS regulations proposed. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. As the reputation of the drone community, hobby, and professional continues to evolve, drones involved in rescue and recovery efforts are making our reps shine even brighter, and we could use all of that we can get. A recent example resulted in the recovery of two hikers and an incapacitated dog who found themselves stranded in New Mexico along a wooded hiking trail, and who now owe their well-being to the use of a firefighter's personal drone. A five-member search team was deployed when one of the hikers, a man and a woman, called 911 at 1700 local time to request help. The couple and their dog were lost in Otero Canyon, according to reports from Bernalillo County Fire Department. Though the couple and the dog were found by the team within an hour, the search team also became disoriented and grew concerned about affecting a recovery before sunset. One of the team's firefighters deployed his personal drone, which he had been testing for a unit commander, just before the search crew was called into action, and he kept it with him during the search. It was used to survey their location and get pointed back to familiar territory. In the next John Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. At the request of the DOD and federal agencies, the FAA has been using its existing authority to address the potential threat posed by malicious drone operations by establishing UAS-specific airspace restrictions over select national security-sensitive locations. The FAA is establishing new or modifying existing restrictions on drone flights up to 400 feet within the lateral boundaries of four sites. Naval Support Activity Monterey, Monterey, California, Naval Air Station Kingsville, Kingsville, Texas, Naval Support Activity Orlando, Orlando, Florida, and Naval Support Activity South Potomac, Indian Head, Maryland. These changes become effective on June 1st. A 2016 UAV accident in which a drone collided with a Seattle Space Needle has resulted in serious penalties for the pilot. Pleading guilty to reckless endangerment, Cole Kelly received a suspended jail sentence of 364 days and fined $5,000 with $4,750 suspended. Kelly also must forfeit his drone and has agreed to cease operating drones as a part of the agreed sentence, though no one was hurt and the Space Needle incurred no serious damage. The NAA tracks dozens of records each year and recently released a list of the best of 2017. As far as drones are concerned, for a speed over 15 to 25 kilometers course of 147.20 miles per hour, the Ohio State University team launched the Avanti JetCat UAS from Kelly's Island in Lake Erie on August 30th. The UAS immediately went into autonomous mode and then made two passes over the 15 kilometer course. The Jack Cat weights 68 pounds at takeoff, has an 8-foot wingspan, and is equipped with a turbojet engine rated at 40 pounds of thrust. Textron Systems unveiled its new X555 engineering testbed at AUVSI's Exponential 2018. Textron Senior VP and General Manager for Unmanned Systems Bill Irby told ANN that the X555 aircraft is a blended wing design that is powered by four independently controlled rotors. There are no traditional control surfaces on the aircraft. Check out Aero TV Textron's X555 thrust vectoring offers intriguing control modes on the Airborne-Unmanned video channel at airborne-unmanned.net. 
That was our General Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. AMA has been busy and has reported what's been a successful year, lobbying in Washington on behalf of all of us. From engaging with legislators at all levels to championing additional TFR waivers, AMA was actively involved on many fronts to preserve the hobby. Model aviation faced many challenges, including an increase in government involvement and proposed regulations. AMA says Section 336 faced numerous attacks while new legislation on our hobby was introduced. One bill that gained traction but did not face a vote was the Drone Federalism Act that would restrict our hobby to 200 feet. Despite the growing opposition, AMA effectively curbed problematic legislation with the help of our members and other industry leaders. In addition, AMA introduced draft language in both the House and Senate that would preserve and strengthen Section 336. Mounting pressure is increasing to fix or repeal Section 336. AMA has adamantly rebutted misperceptions that 336 is a loophole in the rules for operating UAS or creates a get-out-of-jail-free card for any and all recreational operators. More info to follow. AMA's ever-vigilant Tyler Dobbs clued us in on some worrisome state legislative activity. Apparently, Representative Barnes of the Ohio General Assembly has introduced a state UAS bill, which would be very problematic for both hobbyists and commercial UAS operators. Some of the restrictions under this bill include no UAS operations above 400 feet. No UAS operations within 5 miles of an airport which has an operational control tower. No UAS operations within 3 miles of an airport that has a published instrument flight procedure. No UAS operations within 2 miles from an airport or heliport that has neither a published instrument flight procedure nor an operational tower. And every retail seller of UAS shall record, in a manner prescribed by the Director of Public Safety, the name and address of every person who purchases a drone from the seller. AMA has engaged with the Ohio General Assembly opposing this newly introduced UAS bill and will continue to work with the Ohio State legislators to prevent the burdensome UAS restrictions this bill would place on some of our members. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy and Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program, our Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside for normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.